this is Bobby with BC Designs and I just want to start out by saying I know it's been a very long time since I've done a video. I think it was probably in May, April or May because I know June I was on vacation and I didn't do one in July so it's been a couple of months so if my camera is not set up right, if it's too close, not straight, whatever, please forgive me. I will work on it before I start my next video. But today what I'm going to share with you is my free make and takes for August and this is free make and take one. So I do this every month um, except for like last month when I was on vacation for almost two weeks. It was actually two weeks, a little bit longer than two weeks and I just couldn't put get it all done in time. So I sent everybody um, an embellishment ribbon, something like that, that placed orders with me in the month of July. And I'm back to doing my make and take packets. So this is make and take packet one. And how this works is if you shop with me in my online store and you use the host code, I'll try to remember to put it right here in the video. Um, if you spend $25, you earn one free make and take. And if you spend $35, you earn two. And if you spend $50, you earn all three of them. So as the video progresses, I'll show you make and take two and then make and take three. And I am going to pause the video because I can see my phone is not straight and that's driving me crazy. So let me pause the video. I will fix that and be right back. Okay, that looks much better. I am very sorry about that. And I also want to apologize for the ugly nails. Again, I'm going to let these wear off. I went and got them done again, as you guys know. Um, and it's starting in again, and I'm just not, I'm not into it right now. So I'm just going to let them grow out and go all natural. Okay, let me just kind of set this card over there so I can refer to it as I need. I used a couple of different projects as, or products, as you can see. Uh, from what I have laying here in front of me, I used the basic border dies and petal pink and that's, I cut out that and I'll send you that. Then I used the lay layering circle dies and that's how I cut out all my circles and I just used the two smallest of just the regular and then the scallop and then the, the smallest of, let me open this and I'll show you. I'll show you what I mean. I, I feel like I'm sounding confusing. So I used this one, that one, that one, and that one. I put these back in the wrong spots, didn't I? So it's the two smallest of the scallops, two smallest of the regular circles is what I did there, okay? I feel like my phone is leaning again. I don't know why that's doing that. Hold on. Let me pause. Okay, guys, I totally adjusted all of the arms on this thing so hopefully that's gonna work okay now I also used the sentiment silhouette dies and the charming sentiment stamp set for our sentiment and I will send you the whisper white piece which I have let me move some things around so I can reach them so I have right here so I will send you that piece of basic white and it is one and a half by two and a quarter. And then I've already die cut out all the circles for you. So you'll get those die cut out. I'll send you the piece of Poppy Parade that is one inch by four and a quarter. And then this piece of basic white is going to be for the plant. And it is three by two and a quarter. And then I'm going to send you a piece of Poppy Parade that is two by four for the plant holder and then another piece of basic white and this is going to be for the pot and it's one and a half by two okay and then our base is mint macaron and it's four and a quarter by 11 and I just scored it right in the middle at five and a half and then our DSP is four by five and a quarter and the DSP move all of this out of the way is the uh, 12 by 12 Rings of Love designer series paper. And this is one of the celebration items. If you spend $50, you earn that. My camera is leaning again. It's actually my iPhone. So let me, I am so sorry, you guys. I am not sure what is going on with this crazy holder. It's normally really good and does not do this. 
Okay, each time before I hit record again, I'm waiting to see if it's going to move, and it doesn't. And then after I say a little few few words, you know, I look up, and it's moved. So I'm not sure what is going on. Okay, let's get our stamps out, and I'll put them on some blocks really quickly. I am feel like I am very much out of practice on stamping, you guys. And, you know, I, I keep saying that I've worked, been working a lot of overtime, and it's really not that I've been working a lot of overtime. What the situation is, is I have been working 10-hour days. And so, because there is overtime, and if there's more than that, of course, I've been working more than, you know, like have to work the weekends or whatever. And it's been voluntary. It's not been mandatory. We've not been made to do it. But we haven't had overtime in so long. Everybody is really, really taking advantage of that, you know, being able to work. I'm using Poppy Parade ink, Mint Macaron, and Petal Pink. So, but I do, you know, I have missed it, like I said, quite a bit. So, I think instead of staying over, I've not wanted to give up my weekends. But on the weekends, then after working four days at 10 hour days, you know, if it's just eight hours is what we're, what we're allowed to do. If we're allowed to do 16, then, you know, you come in on eight hours on Saturday if you want to. I'm just going to ink up the top of the flower in the mint macaron, stamp it on that piece of basic white, and then we'll die cut it out here in a minute. But working the 10 hour days, when I get home at night, you know, it's midnight or yeah, it's midnight. So by the time I get home, it's actually more close to like 1230. So I don't do much, but go to bed once I get home. And that's when I was working on my Stampin' Up! business. And so I just kind of had to stop for a little bit and then vacation and everything. You know, it's summertime, so it's kind of hard to keep all that in check. But um, yeah, that's really been when I've been working on my Stampin' Up! stuff. So I, it's kind of interfered with that, not being able to get that done. And then on the weekends, you're so tired, you don't want to do anything else. And then I, you know, you've got grocery shopping on top of that. You've got cleaning your house, doing your laundry, getting ready for the next day's work. I'm trying to find my stamp set that I just put over here that has the thank you on it. But, um... I think what I'm going to start doing, and I shared this with my coworkers tonight, instead of staying over four days a week, I think what I'm going to try next week and see how this works for me. And me and the other guy that I work with, we were talking about, you know, we need to kind of slow down anyway. And there's more to life than money and working, right? And... So we were kind of like talking about that. I was sharing, you know, with him about my stamping up and they know that I do this, that I have this little side gig and everything, but they know it doesn't pay my bills. My job with them is what pays my bills. And, um, but I miss it. And that's what I told him, you know, I said, I just so enjoy it. It just brings me so much happiness and joy. And, you know, I just feel so bad that I haven't done anything in quite a while. And I was talking about my club and all that kind of stuff and, I know I'm missing one of my plates. Hold on a minute. Okay, I guess I had to open up a new package of cutting plates because I could only find one plate. But anyway, we were talking and I told him, you know, I really have missed it and really want to get back into it and keep a, a good schedule going. And so I told him I think I might work two days, staying over 10 hour days, and then come in on Saturday and work for four hours because then I can still do stuff three days a week after work and then not be so tired and you know have the weekends too you know the four hours on the weekends because four hours is better than eight hours right but we shall see I know I'm gonna work something out so I don't have to just stop doing what I really enjoy we had a beautiful, beautiful vacation. We went to Panama City Beach again this year and stayed for a week. And then we left there and went to my mother-in-law's. My husband's from Kentucky. Beautiful, beautiful state of Kentucky. 
ends, we stayed there for, we were there for the 4th of July. I think we were there, let me see, what did we get there, Sunday maybe? I can't even remember, you guys. It was a couple of days. We stayed there two or three days. I really can't remember now. And then we finally made it home. And it was nice after that long. I'm not going to cut out the sentiment yet because I really want to make sure I line that up pretty good. Um, but it was so much fun. And very relaxing, but you know, it's always very good to come back home. Like, I love to travel, I love to go on vacation. My husband, not so much, he does it because he loves me. <laughs> but um, I was ready to come home, and I told him I, I was happy the day that we left to come home. I missed my house, I missed everything, I missed my routine always nice to come back home, right? Okay, I'm going to lay all my dies over there so I don't lose them. I'm sure that other plate will turn up here before long, too. Okay, let's go ahead. I know I'm talking a lot, you guys, but I've missed you. I haven't been able to share my life with you. You guys are my friends. I've had a lot of you message me and nice comments and things like that, and where I have been able to post a little bit more like this month's make and takes. People were very nice with their comments on the cards and also sending me messages. So I'm just going to put this, um, and you know what, I cut this at four and a quarter. We're just going to go with it. I cut the paper at four, or the, the poppy parade. I should have cut it at four, so when you get it, it's probably cut at four and a quarter. So you might want to trim that down so it matches your DSP because I've already put those together. And sorry about that. Okay, let's take our circles. Okay, so what we want to do first is we're going to put down the Mint Macron scalloped circle and we're gonna put that right there. I'm just gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back. Just kind of do one of those things. And then I'm just going to use a little bit of my multi-purpose glue on the back of the little border strip. I'm going to use my little tweezers to pick it up so I don't get glue on my fingers everywhere. And then we're just going to put this right in the center, just like that. Okay. And then we'll just start putting the rest of the circles on. So the next one, we're going to put the bigger petal pink one, just the regular, not the it's not the scalloped ones. And I just I'm just kind of looking at my original card and just going from that, you guys. And then we'll put the poppy parade one, and we're just gonna drop it down just a little bit, and then mint macaron. And then we're gonna pop that one up a little bit. And then we'll take our sentiment. And I think I am going to use maybe one of each. I'm not sure if I can get two. I can probably get two on there. Out of practice, guys. I'm unsure of myself. Okay. I am so excited to you guys. We were able, demonstrators were able to register for on stage, and they're going to have an event in Indianapolis this year. I was so excited when I seen that they were having one really close to me and I wasn't going to have to fly anywhere. <laughs> that made me very happy. And it's the first one in three years that we have been able to have because of, you know, the C word. And everybody is like just so excited and can't wait to hang out with everybody and see everybody. I have a really good friend from across the miles and we roomed together in Minneapolis, I believe it was. And um, she's gonna come to the, the Indianapolis one. And I'm so excited to be able to get to see her again because it's been a minute. I'm just going to leave that there for a minute and let it dry. But um, 
what I was going to say is if you want to sign up as a demonstrator, I would love to have you be on my team and you could register for that. You can register until September 23rd, I believe. So I'm just going to put just a little bit. Let me grab some scrap paper here. I don't want to get glue. I just wiped my table down before I started the video because this is kind of a little, little dusty, you guys, where nothing's been going on down here. I'm just going to put just a little bit all over in between. I just actually got home from work a little bit ago. So if you can hear my stomach growling, I'm sorry. I haven't eaten since like 6.30. <laughs> and I don't even want to tell you what time it is right now because it's late. So let's just layer this on top. Just kind of straighten it up a little bit. And you could poke some of the leaves through if you wanted to. I didn't. I didn't do that. And if this bugs you too, on my first one, I actually cut those off because it did kind of bug me a little bit. And so you could just take your paper snips. Oops, I knew I was going to do that when I put my little cap there. I don't want to cut too much, but you could just trim it just like I'm doing right there. If you want to not have it, just that little bit peek out. And you could even do down there if you want to. I'm not worried about it. That's not that big of a deal to me. And then I'm just going to put a few of my dimensionals on the back. Probably one more. Yeah, I am very, very, very excited for on stage, you guys. Very excited. And then I will send you a little strip. And I do mean a little. A little piece about yay big. Because all you're going to do is feed it through there and tie it in a knot. Just to have a little decorative, you know, like it has something that it was hanging on. And I have that glue all over my finger, so it's not wanting to cooperate with me. Can you see all that glue? And I've got one side shorter than the other. I can't do this. I can wipe my hands off, you guys. I'm having a heck of a time trying to get that good through there. I have these little Ikea cups. There is a little like rolling cart that sits to the right of me, but it's back under my cabinet, kind of out of the way. And I have these little Ikea things that I just hang on the side of that cart and I keep other stuff in it. And wipes is one of them. And every time I move, I knock them off. And I don't know if you guys just heard, but when I tried to put the wipes back down there, it fell off. So that's what that noise was if you heard it. Now I'm just going to pull those up and then just trim them off just a little bit to make them look a little bit better. Take the backing off. You know, my, the first video wasn't that bad, I have to say, you guys, for being gone that long. Now, the big question is, can I remember how to upload these to YouTube and iMovie and all that other good stuff that I have to do? And then we'll just place that kind of right there just like that so there you guys go that is make and take one stay tuned for make and take two okay guys well, let's make our second card and it is this super cute one i kind of felt like a back to school theme for august so this is the card we're going to make so our base is a sweet sorbet and it is just your standard size card. And I always have one side, it seems to be off on the scoring. And then we have a piece of basic white that is four by five and a quarter. And then I used the DSP from our, uh, the T bouquet um, six by six pack. And I cut this piece three by three 
and then I cut this piece the same exact three by three and then I just lined each point up in the gutter on my trimmer and trimmed them in half okay so those are that that's how we're gonna lay those out just like that I'm just gonna kind of move this out of the way I will send you also a piece of basic white that is one and three quarters by two and it's what you'll stamp the sentiment on and you will die cut that out if you so use, choose to use the Charming Sentiments again, that's where I got that from, and then the coordinating die to cut it out. And then I went ahead and die cut out everybody a tag, and I used our tailor-made tags for that. And then I'm going to send you another piece of basic white, and this is three and a half by one and a half, and that is what we will stamp the little school supplies on and then color them with our Stampin' Blends. And then Crushed Curry is two and a half by three. We'll stamp the basket on here and then die cut that out, okay? So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna move this stuff out of the way and grab what we need for stamps out of here. This is such a cute stamp set. I wanted it at the beginning, but you know, I was trying to limit myself on what I got, but I ended up having to go back and get this because it is just too darn cute and I couldn't pass it up. I was just seeing too many cute projects. I'm going to move these over here to kind of get them out of my way. And let me see, where is my long blocks at? I know I have more than one, but I don't have more than one over here beside me. Oh, hold on just a second. It's across the room. I had it for the next project coming up already stamped. Okay, and then this that stamp set also comes with the full basket dies. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna grab my mat because these are photopolymer. I'm also going to be using Stampin' Blends markers. I'm going to use the light Tahitian Tide. I have the light basic black. I am using the light and dark sweet sorbet and I'm also using dark pale papaya and light parakeet party okay so and then I'm also going to send you the little twine from the 2022 2024 in color twine pack so we're going to use crushed curry to stamp our basket so just ink that up put that down there like that and I think that's all we need crushed curry for so we'll get that out of the way we're going to stamp the supplies since we're going to use the stampin blends and we'll be using our memento ink to stamp those and then we'll color them here in a minute okay and then just stamp that right on top Okay, oops, knocking everything over. And then we're going to use Sweet Sorbet on the other piece of white. And we're just gonna stamp our sentiments on that. Just like that, okay. Let me move this stuff out of the way bring my little mini die cutting machine back in. Now I've already cut out. Also, I used the little stars. I believe this one is in the basket or either the sentiment one and the hearts I know are in the basket one. But I think the star one was, I know it was, I remember now it was in the sentiment one. So I, I will have those die cut out and send, send you those as well. Okay, let's go ahead and start all of these. Okay, grab that die. Try to move that down a little bit so I can line it up. That looks pretty good. We'll go with that, I think. Hopefully, I've seen it move, but hopefully I didn't move it too much. It still looks pretty good lined up out here in a minute. Yep, pretty good. 
I'll take that. Whoops. Okay, and then let me grab the basket. I think I might try to do the sentiment at the same time. I think I can fit them both on there. See, my basket moved a little bit. We'll try that. And then we'll line this one up. I heard someone say that these were kind of hard to get lined up because they are so exact. And watch, now that I'm saying this, I'll have a hard time. But from what I've used of it so far, I haven't had any issues trying to get them lined up. Hopefully this one will be good. thought my basket moved really bad. It did shift a little bit, but not to the point where I'm going to do it over. See, it's pretty good. Okay, now we can, we'll color our little supplies. That's going to take the longest. Now here I am going to speed it up because I already told you the colors I'm using, but I'll speed it up so it doesn't take forever. I know it's not gonna take that long anyway, but this video ends up being long because I do three cards. So I will speed it up here for you guys. Oh, you know what, before I speed it up, I have to tell you, I did use, and I have to grab it. I had accidentally put my blender pin in the next basket for the next card. I guess I was thinking I used it on that card, but I didn't. I used it on this card. So I'm going to use, because we don't have crushed curry for our um, blender pens, I have my ink in the well right there. And I'm just going to make sure that you have, that you're cleaning it, that you start off with a clean blender pen. But this is, I'm going to use the, ben, bleh, the blender pen on the paper and on these little parts of the marker and on uh, this part here of the pencil, okay? Now I'll speed it up. did change it up a little bit with the markers and the little piece of the the green back there just to add a little bit of difference to it when I first did the card I thought I kind of was sticking to the the crushed curry and the sweet sorbet 
but then I didn't want everything to be just like all blended in. So that's when I pulled in the parakeet and the Tahitian Tide. And so that's why I decided, well, I've already got those on the inkers. We'll just use those on the markers just to snazz it up just a little bit. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll adhere this. You can use Tombow for that, or you can just put a strip of adhesive along the top and then just line this up just wherever you want it, really, just like that. And then let's put some dimensionals. That'll help hold that in place. We'll put a few on the bottom. Whoops. Kind of like that. Let's put one up here. I'm just going to move that out of the way. We'll go ahead and put these pieces down. And what I did, I just lined it up and kind of left, oops, kind of left myself a little bit of a border. And I'm going to use Tombow for this because I do want the, the time that Tombow glue, the, the liquid glue, is going to give me to be able to move my pieces in case it goes south on me. Okay, so let's just line. And I'm just going to leave myself a little border, not a, not a huge one. Put a little bit too much Tombow there. We'll get that in a minute. And I like to use it, the, the liquid glue because since these are two different pieces, I can kind of eyeball it at the bottom and see, well, how much of a border did I have down there and kind of try to get my borders at the same amount, just like that, okay? Now I'm gonna grab myself a paper towel and just kind of dot up that ink, or I'm sorry, that glue, okay? And then we're just going to put this piece right in the center, but I can use stamp and seal for that. Nothing fancy. And then I just put it, just eyeball it and put it right in the middle. You could pop this up on dimensionals if you want to, but I'm just going to use our regular stamp and seal. Okay, and we'll just put this right like that. Okay, then we can go ahead and put our basket on. And we'll just put it right in the center, like that. Let's grab our tag and put some dimensionals on the back of it. And you can turn it if you want and kind of put it on. I toyed with that idea. Kind of put it on like that if you want. But I just put mine right like that. And let me grab. I got buried over here. And we're going to use minis for this one. Let me find. Okay. Whoops, there we go. And there we go. And then we'll just put this right there. Grab that little piece of twine that I'm gonna send you guys and we're gonna just tie a cute little bow. Just a tiny one. If you guys have found any way to get the little kinks out of your twine from where it's on that roller. I would greatly appreciate it if you would share that with me because I seen somebody say something about a little, like a little iron that you can like for quilting, but that's a lot. But I am almost to the point to where I'm ready to try it because I hate when I cut my ribbon and then it has those little kinks in it where you can't get it to lay. Now that looks really cute, so hopefully that'll stay. i use a little mini glue dot to adhere this. There we go. And we'll just pick that up. And then I usually just put it right within that hole. This one's laying really good. I am going to 
trim this one just a smidge because I feel like it's just a little bit longer than the other one. My scissors need cleaned off. And of course, I'm not using my ribbon scissors, so that's probably not a good idea. Okay, let's put these away. And you could use the glue dots to put down the hearts and the stars. But I believe I just used good old-fashioned Tombow. I'm going to take this off and flip these over if I can. That one's already over. It looks like I'm missing one. Oh, it's right here. It's kind of hard to tell if these are upside down or... I think I have them all right. God only knows, right? So this these don't take very much. Just a little dab. So be very cautious when you're putting your Tombow on the back. You don't need much at all. Just like that. And then for the stars, I'm going to go ahead and use a mini. Got to be very careful the way that you're placing that because you can see that's a very tight fit on the back. And if you don't like that idea, just go ahead and use your your glue. I'm just going to pick these up. And these, I just randomly, no rhyme or no reason, I didn't want them straight. So you might have one that's upside down. Let's do this one kind of like that. And then that one decided to jump on my finger. Hopefully it has enough Tombow that it's going to adhere. Okay, and then we'll take this one and put it right there. And this one we'll put right there. Okay, guys, I will be right back with card three. Okay, guys, we are going to make our third card. And I can't show it to you because I don't have it. I made it for my oldest son. And it was his birthday card, and his birthday is already come and gone, and so I had to give it to him. <laughs> and I didn't have time to do the video before I gave him his card. So we'll have to refer to the picture, or just wait and see what it looks like when I get done with it, okay? So to make his card, I used the Elephant Parade Bundle, but I honestly didn't use anything except for the balloon image on here. And then I used the elephant dies. I used the balloon die to cut that out. And I will tell you, I'm sending you a piece of white and black cardstock that is, um, let me see, two and a half by two and a half for you to stamp the balloons on and then die cut them out. And I will show you, I even thought I was going to have to use this piece to do the black on, but I already, um, I found, I thought I had extra that I, when I was making his card that I cut out. But as you can see, I have three on here. I thought I was gonna have to die cut those out, but I don't need those now because I have four already die cut. So it's gonna be four. You're gonna need two whisper white or basic white. I can't pick that one up. And then two basic black. And then I'm using our black embossing powder. And then, of course, we're going to need Versamark ink for that. Um, but you will just stamp and then use your, on your basic white, you'll stamp the image and die cut it out. And then you'll just do the, the same with the basic black. It is a little bit harder to line up that die because you really can't see the black, but you can do it. If I can do it, I know you can do it. And I didn't have any issue. And then I'm sending everybody already a pre-tied bow with this beautiful black and white gingham ribbon. I love this ribbon. And then everybody's going to get three of the matte black dots to go on. And then I'm sending everybody a piece of basic white cardstock that's four by five and a quarter. And I used the um, quarter foil tile embossing folder on that. Then I will also send you another piece of basic white. We're going to, this one is one and three quarters by four and a quarter. And I used the, I think I already put them away because I thought I was done with them. I did the sentiment bundle with the die. So I'll have to grab that because I did put that up. And then I used the fabulous frames to die cut out my frame. 
And then for his on the inside, I did stamp the growing older is mandatory, growing up is optional happy birthday, just because I thought that was so cute. So I did put that on the inside of his card. So our base is uh, basic black and it's eight and a half by four and a half scored at four or five and a half scored at four and a quarter. And then we'll just take and put that piece of basic white right on top. So I'll just put some adhesive on the back. We'll just adhere that down. Now, I, like I just said, I already have my balloons die cut out. But we'll just put this then in the middle. And what I did when I made his was I just used Stampin' Dimensionals. And I put one at the top and one at the bottom. That's all I did. And then we want to leave room to put the sentiment towards the bottom. But we'll just put this for right now. Right about there. A little bit centered, but I think I did put mine just up a little bit taller put stamp and dimensionals on the backs of all of the balloons okay and then i liked to i'm trying to turn around i have the picture pulled up behind me so i can kind of visualize kind of did something like this and then this one i'm going to cut the end of it off I'm not going to cut too much because I want to make sure. And we'll just adhere this one behind that one, something like that. But first, let's move on to doing our sentiment. And I'm going to grab my mat because I'm going to use photopolymer. Now, I just used the tray. I love this tray, but because I have these already done up in these little bowls, I didn't want to dump them out. I don't have the containers or anything. I might stop doing that as I replenish my supply of embossing powders and just leave them in the little container they come in and then use the tray. But for right now, I'm just using the tray to still catch, catch everything. And then I also have my old embossing buddy from our original. So I'm just going to use that, that one instead of opening up a new one. And then I'm going to use my Versamark and ink up that sentiment. I think I had it right the first time. We'll just stamp that right on there. I'm going to get this out of my way. And then we'll just pull that up. I'm going to move this. I don't have to worry about getting it a mess. I'm going to use my little tweezers to hold on to it for me. And then just put my embossing powder right on top of there. Okay. I feel like I do. Oh, I'm going to hold it with my right hand. Okay. And then just flick it to get all that extra off. That's not going to matter. We'll die cut it. I think that's good, you guys. Now let's turn on the heat tool and set this. I'll take my heat tool just a minute to warm up because it hasn't been on. The embossing buddy, though, it really helps to remove fingerprints and just anything that you might have on your cardstock. So you can get a better image, but you can see it's already starting to melt. Just make sure you have it all. We have it all melted. Then you can even go on the back side if you want. Okay, I think that's good. Turn that off. And then I like to let it cool for a minute before I try to put my die cut around it. Because that's still hot, so it could, could move on us and melt and mess up our design. So we'll just wait just a few minutes. I'm going to grab my little mini and bring it over and I'll grab the frame. I'm going to just kind of like 
fan it a little bit to help it cool down and that should probably be good. And then we'll just lay this around there. And you can use tape if you want to, to help you make sure that you have this. I'm, I have a feeling this one's going to move more and I don't have any washi tape nearby to hold it down. So wish me luck when I go to die cut that out. But I did a pretty good job on lining it up. Not bad. Not bad. I'll take it. Okay, and then I'm going to put a couple of dimensionals on the back of here. This card's super quick. My son really liked it. I can't remember what he said that it looked like. Um, it wasn't retro. But, like, I know what era he was thinking, and I just cannot think of the name of it. Now I'm going to turn around and see. So I placed the sentiment first. And I'm just going to place it about there. And then we're going to put our bow. So I have to tie myself one because I haven't made myself one. And I sent you a little bit bigger than, you know, you'll have to, to mess with it a little bit. I made sure I kept the tails long enough for you to be able to fold it down and cut it and make it the size that you want. I'm just going to trim these a little bit. And I might still even have to adjust that here in a minute. Get my ribbon back over here. And then we'll put a glue dot. I'm trying to see on my original. I think I put it at the bottom down here. So you might want to trim it and make it just a little, little bit smaller. And of course, then we'll want to trim these just a little bit more. Let's see. I think that looks good like that. I'll put a mini glue dot on the back. We'll put the balloons on. Our gems. And then we will be done. And remember guys, if you place your qualifying order, I'm going to send you these. So it's $25. You'll earn the first free make and take. $35 the second and if you spend 50 I will send you all three make and take packets okay now we have that guy down let's start the assembly and I'm just gonna I just kind of put the place to those first and we'll do the white one and I kind of just dropped it down just a smidge I'm gonna put this one up a little bit well, let's see. Got to find that opening, and we'll put that one up a little bit. And then this one goes down. And you can trim these off if you don't like them showing. Like this one's going to show back there. And then this one, I kind of put like that. So we'll go ahead and adhere. Oops. We'll go ahead and adhere these two together. And I'm just going to use that dimensional to stick that one. Something like that. And I'm just going to leave this one right there until I get these other two placed where I want them. So we'll just put this one up a little bit higher. This one is going to drop down just a smidge like that and then we'll put this one kind of like that cute right and it's just so easy and simple to do okay let me grab black matte dots and they slid out when I picked up the package okay let's do this and I can't see that up close behind me to see where I place these. So I'm just going to place them where I think I probably would have placed them. Because we all know how we all operate, right? I think I put one here. And then it looks like, if I can see right, another one like right there. Something like that. Okay, you guys, there you go. This is my free make and takes 
for August 2022. Thanks so much for watching the video. I'm going to try to get back into uh, being able to post videos. I'm not going to say that I'm going to do them on Tuesdays and Thursdays like I used to. It's just going to be one of those things um, that when I have time, I'll be able to do it and maybe not on a set schedule, but I am going to try to do two videos a week. I think I might be able to get that done. If not, for sure one. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching guys. And if you haven't, please make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks guys.